In this video, we're going to teach you how Nextcloud operates on your computer. Now, the one I have in front of me here is a Windows computer. Um, the Apple works very much the same way. You're going to have an icon in the case of Windows at the bottom. In the case of uh, Next uh, Apple, it will be at the top. Uh, this icon right here, if you uh, right-click on it, and by the way, that icon changes a little bit depending on what Nextcloud is doing at any given moment. Um, we're going to right-click on that, and we're going to choose Settings. Now, in Settings, you see a bunch of files and folders, and, they have, and most of them have check marks next to them. The ones that have check marks are the ones that we want to synchronize with the server. So you see this one that says junk. I don't have that checked because I just drop stuff in there that I plan on deleting at some point in time, and I don't want it synchronized up to the server. Now, on your computer, you're going to see this little Nextcloud icon, which is a folder itself. And when I click on that, you see all of these files on the right-hand side. These are, in fact, the very same files that Nextcloud shows in its application, except these are the ones living on your computer. I can go in and start deleting files here. I can't do that on this other side here. This is just showing me what's being synchronized. Now, you've got a lot of other folders in your computer, like documents, pictures, downloads, desktop. None of those are going to be synchronized by default. Now, you can add them. By default, they're not going to be synchronized. Only those things you drop inside the Nextcloud folder are going to be synchronized. So best practices for you is not to rely on your, your systems, your computer's default folders, and adding those to Nextcloud. Best practice is to create the folders that you want to sync with the server in this Nextcloud folder and know that anything in there is going to be grabbed. Um, with the one exception is over here if you do, in fact, uncheck it from that, those things that are being synchronized. Okay, now in here, if you wanted to add other folders on your computer and have them sync to the server, you could choose this Add Folder Sync Connection, in which case you could then browse to your local computer, pick documents or some other local folder, and add it, and they would, in fact, be synchronized up to the server as well. But again, I'm going to recommend against that. It just confuses things. Then you don't know what's being backed up and what's not being backed up without checking in Nextcloud. Using this other method, you always know anything in there is being synchronized unless, unless you've asked it not to be. Now, there's a big advantage in using Nextcloud, in fact, more so than even uh, some of most of the paid cloud drive alternatives. You end up with redundancy. So everything in your Nextcloud folder, of course, lives on your local computer. The actual file really lives here. It's not a placeholder of a file. It is the whole file. A lot of the cloud services uh, that you'll sign up for, they give you a placeholder, and only when you double-click it does it get downloaded from the server. Uh, that's not the way. You don't have any uh, safety net in uh, using it that way. Here you have the whole file locally. Then you have Nextcloud synchronizing it to your server, so you get a full copy of the file in two separate locations. So if either one of those locations blow up, you've still got the other. Now, in addition to that, your company should have a backup running on the server, which typically will take your file structure off-site, giving you yet a third layer of redundancy. So a lot of protection using a product like Nextcloud uh, with your CompuMata server. Now, let's talk a little bit about these unresolved conflicts that you see popping up over here. Uh, that's why the icon is currently also that color. And that icon will change from that to green uh, and a few other things, depending on what it's uh, synchronizing. It'll change to a couple of arrows. But in this case, I'm going to take a look at these unresolved conflicts. And uh, we'll click on this first one. And it tells me uh, we have conflicting versions for whatever reason. However that happened, it's not sure 
whether we want to keep the one that's local or the one that lives on the server. Well, the one that's local, nine times out of ten, maybe more than that, is the one that you've edited last. Um, so I'm going to keep the local version. And then it starts synchronizing again. You see the icon changes. You get a green check mark here until it discovers another conflict. And we'll you know take a look at one of those. Tell it the local version again. Keep local version. Now, I haven't resolved any of my conflicts for a while. I just haven't paid any attention to it. So there's, I've got a, a dozen or so of those conflicts in there. So it's going to keep hitting me with these every time it comes up to the next one. But that's what that is. It's very easy to resolve uh, the majority of the time. You just click that and move on. And that's it. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed it.